Time to take a look through the business pages of today's newspaper. So I'm joined for that task by Lord Billamoria, the founder of Cobra Beer, now a crossbench beer, and Rita Clifton, the chair of Brandcap, the Boardroom Brand Consultancy. Very good morning to you both. Thank you very much indeed. What have you found? Rita, kick us off here. What, what, what have you found on the business pages? Then? Um, Google is in obviously quite a few uh, business pages, you know, so Google and also there's other naughty multinational corporations the naughty are step. not uh, paying enough tax. So it's talked about Google, Google has coughed up 130 million to the tax man, that's including some back taxes. And clearly a lot of people are thinking this is a drop in the ocean in comparison with what they are generating. Now what this article goes on to say is this is a, a new era supposedly uh, for business which is uh, going to, it says here, the only real solution is international cooperation. Now that may be true but I think it's good luck with that one on the international cooperation front. I mean, I mean clearly no organisation is going to pay any more tax than it has to. However the dilemma for them is that what is legal is not necessarily ethical and it's certainly not acceptable uh, in the minds and the hearts and also the behaviours of some of their key stakeholders not least of which of course are their customers. Okay well let's uh, get the the businessman's view. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you. I'm sure you look after your company in terms of how much money you, you we, pay we, in taxes. We in the UK have one of the most attractive rates of corporation tax. I mean, 20 percent by any standards is very attractive. But in spite of that, companies will do their best on a global level, and you can't get a more global company than Google that makes sales of almost 70 billion dollars a year. It makes profits of 16 billion dollars a year. Now, if you say the UK makes up about 10 percent of Google sales, six, seven billion dollars worth of sales. If its share of profits is, let's say, 1.6 billion, it should be paying about 200 million pounds of tax per year. Right. And this deal goes back over many years. Now, if we can say, come on, Google, be fair, yes, you can be tax competitive. We offer a very competitive tax rate, but pay as much tax as you can out of your global profits over here in the UK. And they're creating jobs. We've got to look at this in the whole. They've got about 5,000 jobs just in their head office. Um, so it, it, the jobs are what create the most tax. Uh, of our tax take as a country, it's PAYE and NI that make up almost 50% yeah, I mean, of our tax. We, I mean, don't we, don't we always come down to the, you know, it's the come on, pay your fair share. And, yes. and we hear about international deals. We hear about from these summits. We hear from the, the great and good about clamping down on the multinationals. Mm. It just doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't, but we should absolutely remember that it's not that these companies pay no tax. Mm. They are paying national insurance. They are mm. paying rates and so on. It's not that they don't pay anything. And the other thing is we are walking a quite a delicate tightrope here as far as you know, brand UK and business is concerned. I mean, it's a very unedifying sight when you watch Margaret Hodge, Public Accounts Committee, lining up major, you know, m major corporations to get a good spanking as far as their behaviour is concerned. So you have to give off the right vibes that we won't be messed with, but also we can't give off the okay, vibes of business line. not welcome here. All right, Very uh, important for brand Britain as far as business is concerned. Uh, bring us another story, Lord Pilamori. Well, um, the big story, of course, is, is Davos has taken place and uh, the Prime Minister has spoken. Um, George Osborne has just said, great news, I've now managed to get a break on further regulations coming in to, from the EU. But on the other hand, Christine Lagarde today in the, in the Sunday Times warns, head, of the IMF. head of the IMF warns against Brexit. And then you've got Eric Pickles in the Sun saying, I've had more European bust-ups than I've had hot dinners. Now, the, the thing is that Christine Lagarde's point is very important. Um, we can go through the whole argument about the pros and cons of staying in the EU, um, but it's the perception of the outside world that we often forget. It's what do countries like India, what do countries like the United States think of the fact that we're still in the EU at the table as opposed to being a country in the European economic area? Say well, well like bring your, your expertise and your input, your knowledge. So my, my view from what I see in, in India, for example, as the founding chairman of the UK India Business Council, doing business with Cobra in India, the Indians really see us as a gateway to Europe. And if we were suddenly to be out of Europe, that would hamper our image enormously. Mm. Being there mm. as part of Europe is very, very important. And from a business point of view as well, business is a concern. London is the number one financial city in, in the world. Will we be if we're not part of Europe? Perhaps. Well, you know, I mean, Rita, other people are going to say, well, you know, that's an element of project fear. You know, there are other major, yeah. major companies, car makers and the rest of them say, yeah, we're fine with the UK, whether you're in or out of the European yeah, Union. But we have to remember, I mean, you know, in terms of our trading in the world, about 
half of our uh, exports are within the EU. I mean, this is an extraordinarily important trading partner for us. And of course, the city is just waking up to this panic. And actually, Christine Lagarde, if you look at uh, her comments today on the front of the, uh, the Sunday Times business section, I mean, Europe is just as worried about Brexit. I wish we could stop using that term, but nevertheless, yeah. uh, they're just as worried as many business leaders are about our exit from, from the EU. Um, it's bad for stability, and you know, stability is very, very important for business, as we all know. Unless you've got a stable economic and operational platform, it's very difficult well, then to be creative and, and innovative. And there's no question about it. We are a very strong country. We're still the fifth largest economy in the world. If we're out of Europe, it's not the end of the world. What we're saying is, is it better to be within Europe or not? And to have more regulation coming from Europe being stopped is great news. To say very clearly, we are not part of this project for an ever further unifying Europe and a United States of Europe. Britain's out of that. We don't want to be part of that. That's good news. So we can put our foot down on a lot of things. We're not part of the euro, thank God. And yeah. the euro is a disaster. The only reason the euro has been kept together is because it's far more trouble dismantling it, you reckon. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it's very interesting that Europe in general has been a very, very... It's been very bad at communicating the benefits of Europe. You know, at the moment, That's the perception point. is absolutely that Europe gets in the way of stuff happening, not very much about what enables to happen, what the opportunities are, because, you know, we're the world's lar largest trading bloc. We have an extraordinary range of okay. creative, in in innovative yes. nations Absolutely. going on in Europe. There's so much to be harnessed in a very competitive world. Who's there about uh, their campaign from the business perspective ahead? Yeah. Have we got one more story you can uh, bring to us, Lord Bill and uh, Yes, there's a very good story in the Sunday Times um, about Tata Steel and saying goodbye to all that. And it's about um, mm. Tata paying £6.7 billion in 2007 for Chorus, for British Steel. Mm. And what trouble they're having now. The number of jobs has gone down from 24,000 to 17,000. On the other hand, the story also talks about Jaguar Land Rover, the deal that went right for Tata. In 2008, nobody wanted to buy Jaguar Land Rover. No. Tata, Steel, Tata was seen to be saving Jaguar Land Rover by paying about $2.3 billion dollars they now make more profit than mm. they paid for that company in 2000. But mass, it wasn't just the buying, was it? It's the investment in investment. models, in marketing. Totally. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a case study in British excellence in manufacturing. That everyone said the British manufacturing is dead. Look at this. This is something we're proud of. 500,000 cars produced, the biggest car maker, pride of the world, Jaguar Land Rover, Range Rover, and yet, All right. who's running it? A German chief executive, Absolutely. Indian investment. It shows Britain as an bit open of a theme economy. To, a bit of a theme to the way you've been it's described. It's wonderful. I think that's what's bit. great about this country. Last thought on that and read it. Well, you know, we are fantastic at high-end manufacturing. It's not true to say we don't make things anymore. Uh, we have a great image in the world, again, for high quality, trusted services. We don't exploit that stuff. We don't have enough ambition uh, as far as British businesses are concerned. If you just go to America, if you go to some parts of you know, the developing world, the amount of ambition and innovation and drive there is. We need to be more ambitious for our businesses because yeah, yeah. we've got so much to offer. Nice to hear it. Uh, Rita Clifton, Lord Billamoria, thank you very much indeed. And you're watching on Sky News. Coming up next.